In this video, I'm going to be talking about Anki and how you can use it to try to memorize things forever. I'm Davido, I'm a doctor in Australia that loves using tech. And Anki has been something that I've used since first, second year of medical school. And I still remember stuff from like nine years ago. I have like images burned in my brain from back then because of the fact that I put in Anki. I have friends that have, for example, won clinical prizes and they attribute a lot of their success to Anki. And you probably heard about it before from Ali Abdal, from other people, like Anki is really, really good. It's a flashcard software, it's free. It works on this idea of space repetition. Essentially what it does is it shows you these flashcards more spaced out as you learn them. So for example, if you have a flashcard that gets seen today and you see it tomorrow again, then it won't show you for like another seven days. And that's really, really useful because we know that the most effective way to learn is to try to revise a thing that you're just about to forget. Time is precious, so let's get started on how to actually use it. This is the basic home screen of Anki. I've modified it a little bit, but if you just go to the top here and click add, then you can simply add a new flashcard. For example, in this right hand window, uh, this is just me like looking at a website about atrial fibrillation. What you do is at the front of the card, you want to put the question that you're gonna ask. In this particular case, I'm gonna type in, what are the classifications of atrial fibrillation? And basically all you need to do is you can actually just copy and paste it from there into there and then click add and that's your card added. And so what that looks like is when I actually go to study that card, so I click on the default deck, for example, and just click study now, it shows me the question immediately, but it doesn't actually uh, show me the answer. I just have to press enter or you know click this button down here to show the answer. So what are the classifications of atrial fibrillation? Well, in my mind, I think that there's paroxysmal atrial fibrillation and persistent atrial fibrillation, basically. There's probably more, as you can see from these details. Okay, like there's a lot more different types I suppose you could uh, talk about atrial fibrillation with, right? With this, you can see that it shows you the flashcard. There's these buttons that come up at the bottom. So again, good and easy. And actually, if you press one, two or three, that is the same as pressing uh, again, good and easy respectively. Let's say that, you know, I didn't really get this card right. I was like, oh, I don't really know, like what are the classifications of atrial fibrillation? So I might click again. And then what will happen is that it might show me a few other cards in between if I've got more, but within the space of a minute, it's gonna show me this card again, give me another chance to try to redeem myself. And then if I click press enter and be like, oh, okay, yeah, I remembered that, you know, the things such as permanent atrial fibrillation and long-standing atrial fibrillation, in addition to practicing more persistent atrial fibrillation, then it's something where I can be like, okay, like I think this card is good. Now you can see that it's got different numbers here. Here it's less than 10 minutes, here's one day, and here's five days. Yours might look a little bit different because you can actually alter these different times. And what happens is that if you press good, it's not gonna show you the card again for that day, for example. In fact, here, if I press good, it's like, okay, I've finished the deck for now. In my particular case, what will happen is that tomorrow, this card will reappear in my deck, it will show me again, and then I can give another chance to actually study it. The idea behind Anki is that if you forget a card, for example, it will show you that card again in a short space of time instead, because it's like, oh, okay, you've got it, you need to relearn it. If you do really well, and for example, you click on easy or good again, then it spaces out the time that it shows you that card. So for example, it might show you in like seven days time, instead. That's where the power of space repetition lies and that's where a lot of that memorization comes from. Let's talk about the card a little bit more. If you uh, actually go to browse and what happens is this window pops up um, and it can show you all the different cards that you've written in the past. So that's the browse button at the top here. I've created a new deck by the way. This is a completely new deck so that's why you don't see any cards. This one card here is my card that I've just written and you can edit inside the uh, browse function as well. I'm gonna like make this a bit bigger. In this particular case what I've done is you can see that I've got this extra box called details and you actually have to add that separately. So for example if you click on the fields button you can see that actually by default this thing doesn't exist because I've just added it before. So like what it usually looks like on your screen is it just has these two boxes front and back. But if you click fields you can actually add a separate field to it. So what I tend to like doing is I add a details field and the reason for doing that is because I don't want to just memorize one thing, but sometimes I still like to look up my notes. So for example, if I like now copy and paste that into here, into the details bit, and then I keep this really, really simple for the back card. So for example, it's like, you know, practice is more persistent and maybe permanent. And just like, you know, obviously this is not all inclusive, but I just wanted to leave it to those three 
things so that when I look at this card again, I don't have to try to look at this entire thing, which can be too much. One of the really important and early stylistic choices that you have to do with Anki from early on is you really don't want the individual cards to be overloaded with information because if they are too detailed, chances are one is very, very hard to memorize this, this stuff for the question that you're trying to answer. And then two, it's just, feels like a drag. I think that the, it's much nicer to have more cards with like littler pieces of information or at least to have one sort of main concept that ties a card but if you have multiple concepts within the same card chances are you're going to forget some of the concepts within that card. This is what I tend to do and I'll just uh, do another card as an example. Let's say that I am going to go back to my deck so let me close this one. I'm going to add a new card and then this thing. Conditions that increase the risk of AF. So I'm literally just going to copy and paste this into details and then I'm going to ask myself what are the top three conditions that cause AF? Question mark. Let's say that I've just copied and pasted that there. And so now what I want to do is I just want to put in maybe the top three conditions. So let's say theoretically it's hypertension, ischemic heart disease, which is actually not in the conditions bit there, but it should be. And then thyrotoxicosis. That is a way that I simplify down a whole bunch of information because frankly, a lot of medicine is distillation of the important points that you actually need to know um, because there's a lot of extra stuff that you don't need to know. And I think that um, it's useful to have this other stuff there. So like, for example, if you get an esoteric exam question, you'd be like, oh, like I vaguely remember reading that thing. But at some stage, you'll probably find that you just want to keep things simple because as you get more and more cards, it's really going to make a big difference. Now, let's talk a little bit more about some of the things here. You've noticed that there's this little box at the bottom called tags, and we haven't used that yet. But tags essentially allow you to make the cards easier to search. The other thing is that you can actually study by tags as well. So let's say that I'm just going to do cardiology here and my other one doesn't have cardiology, although maybe it should. So it means that if you click the browse function again, the tags part comes down here and then now your card has actually got the tag. Let me just extend this a little bit. And uh, it should have the tag somewhere here. So you can actually sort it by tags and then there you go. So that when you actually search in the search bar at the top, get tag cardiology as an example. That's obviously going to be very useful if you've got really big decks and you just want to study particular cards. You can even create like a custom study session with that as well. So for example, if you go to the default deck and then you just go to custom study, then at the bottom you can actually study by a state, a card state or tag. So in this particular case, I'm going to select, you can actually like click this require one more tag. Then in my example, I'm going to click cardiology. I'm going to obviously not exclude cardiology. And then I'm going to click OK. And now I can study that as a custom card. So the cards that are in that tag will come up. Now you don't need to do that. If you don't know anything about tags, that's totally OK. But that's a good feature that you can use. If you have, for example, different specialties, you probably want to organize those specialties into different categories. Let's say that I'm making a card about nephrology and I might be like, what is triple whammy? as an example, right? And then the back of my card might be something like it's a combination of ACE inhibitors plus NSAIDs plus diuretic equals kidney damage. So that, that's a very common thing to sort of know. In this particular case, obviously it doesn't really fit in cardiovascular. So I'm going to actually include it in my maybe nephrology section. So if I actually click on this top right bit that says deck. So this button says deck and says default, but I'm going to click on that and then I can add a new deck. By adding a new deck, I can, for example, just put nephrology as an example, right? And now this card is in a separate deck by itself. And let's add that. And so now you've got this, this separate deck. The cool thing is that when you study the separate deck, obviously by clicking on this deck, you can just study that particular deck for that particular day. And so that might be really useful if you just want to memorize one topic. The other cool thing is that you can actually create sub decks. So for example, let's say I wanted to include nephrology under the default deck, right? So I can simply drag this one to down here. And then that means that if I click on the default deck, I'm going to be studying all the different decks inside the subject too. So uh, it'll come up there when I try to study that sort of master deck. That can be really useful, for example, if you just want to, you know, study a whole bunch of cards at the end and they're all in different specialties, but you still need to study them all. So you can just chuck them all in one deck and then study the, the parent deck, so to speak. In this part of the video, I want to talk a little bit about the different steps. There's this concept of space repetition and sometimes, to be honest, I use the Anki defaults for how 
long it takes to remind you of a certain card, especially if you've forgotten it. That's perhaps not the most efficient way to do it though. There's basically like a lot of different people's opinions on what is like the optimization strategy from the space scene itself. What you can do is if you go, for example, to this little cogwheel that's on a deck, so for example, default, and you just go to options, um, it comes up with a whole bunch of new things. The Anki default is, if you get rid of this, the defaults kind of look like 110, which means that it'll show you the card again within one minute, and then in 10 minutes, if you click good, it'll show you the card again in only 10 minutes. That's very, very quick, and if you're trying to memorize cards like at the time of doing this, that's perfectly reasonable, and these cards will gradually space it over time. The problem is that if you've got a lot of cards, medical school, for example, um, that can get very overwhelming very quickly because it shows you a lot of cards in a very short space of time. What I do instead is I change this to be like the steps are actually 10 minutes and then if I you know click good it's actually going to show me again in like this one day and then if I get it excellent then it shows me again in sort of three days time. So that's the sort of steps I use 10 1440 14, and 4320. You can also like change the number of new cards a day if you want to. So for example, if you feel like 20 cards is not quite enough, maybe you can change that. I know, 9999, just whatever the maximum is. I tend to change the easy interval to a bit longer as well. This is something that you just have to see whether it works for you over time. Easy interval is just the time that if you click on the button that says easy after you've completed the card, then it's that's the time like it shows you the card next sort of thing. Reviews, I don't change these too much, you don't need to. Lapses is kind of similar to like a new card. It means that you've got the card and it's shown to you, but then you've clicked again because you've forgotten the contents of that card. To be honest, I think that I just change this kind of to the same thing as new cards because it's like, okay, like if I forgot it, maybe I just need to relearn it. Some people try to extend this, this um, number of minutes and stuff even if you don't alter any of these settings and you just leave the defaults, that's kind of fine as well. It's probably going to be a bit arduous in the sense you get a lot of cards in a short amount of time, but Anki itself is like a really great software, so eventually you'll certainly learn every single card that you get shown. I keep leech action as suspend card because in my mind, if I'm looking at a card way too many times, I actually don't want to spend the cognitive effort to memorize that card because it's like, okay, this is just too much for me. I obviously can't handle it. I need to so either break down that card or if I was like, oh, like I really should know it, then maybe I'll put it as tag only. But in my mind, it's kind of like, by learning this card and not learning another card, then like I'm wasting my time. So I kind of like to keep the leech card and the leech threshold is eight lapses. So it means that you've literally forgotten that same card eight times and therefore you can't memorize it. So yeah, I know, I keep it as the same card. In this, I tend to uh, increase this, ignore answer times longer than whatever seconds, um, just because sometimes you go away and you grab a snack and then Anki ignores, <laughs> ignores you uh, if you uh, take too long to do the card. Yeah, that is Anki in a nutshell. There's a few plugins that are super duper duper useful. I suppose the first thing I should talk about though is that let's say that you don't have a nice website that just has text and stuff, or it comes out really, really formal. What you can do is, let's say that like I wanted to copy and paste this picture. Well, what I've set up on my Mac is I've actually changed my shortcut because there's a shortcut, sorry for your Windows by the way, I'm pretty sure the shortcut is Windows Shift S, I think, and that does like a screenshot tool. So in Macs, um, you also have the screenshot tool that's built in. And what I've done is I actually go to my assistant preferences, go to keyboard and go to shortcuts. And if you go to this screenshots button, you'll see something that says copy area, sorry, copy picture of selected area to the clipboard. What I've done is I've changed the theme because it's like a, some contortion of the hands. Like it's like a bunch of different keys together if you don't change it. But I've made it really easy and just done that as control F. <laughs> so in this particular thing, for example, if I press control F, you can see that my cursor has changed and now I can drag like a bit of the screen and then that means that I can immediately paste it into there. That is something that's super duper good. And by pasting, it's just like command V as usual. So it's super duper good in the sense that like, you know, for example, I just want to copy this real quick and then paste it into there. You can see that literally took me two seconds. Whereas if you were to try to fumble around and get the right keys and use some other software like Skitch or whatever, it just takes ages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something trippy. And I'm just going to literally copy and paste this and then I'm going to put it here. Now, let's say that it's conditioned that it increases the risk of AF. But because it's an image, I can't uh, copy and paste this text, obviously. But if you have an image like this, you can add this add-on called image occlusion. If you click on this button, 
What it does is it gives you this sort of thing that kind of looks like MS Paint and it allows you to block certain oops, it allows you to block certain cards uh, at, like the areas of certain cards out so for example if i go to here and i just want to make this as three different cards what i can do is drag my rectangle here and then drag it over the bits that i want to hide so i'm going to drag it over here here and here and so you've got these different buttons at the bottom but for example if you click on hide one, guess one. What will happen is that this will make three separate cards that hide one of the boxes. So for example, add this card as well. Then I click on study. So let's just go to try to get that other card. So this is an example of one of the cards that we've image included. You can see that it's got this bit in red here. And then as soon as I show the answer, it's going to, to reveal what the answer was for that particular thing. And obviously this is a bad example in the sense that I'm just doing it on text. But it's mostly useful for example if you're trying to memorize like which area of the brain is this particular area. And then you might have like Broca's area, the label like sort of occluded out. So you can see that this would be really useful. Let's keep going. Something else that's really useful if you're making a lot of cards, let's say this uh, you've got a key manager dynamically unstable actual fibrillation, right? And for whatever reason, when you're making cards, maybe you've got like a few different concepts uh, in here. Let's just put this one here too, just for illustration's sake. You want to have your details there, but you want to actually, when you're making the card, save the text inside it, because by default, what happens is that these fields reset every single time you make a new card. So if I click on this snowflake, what will happen is that if I make a card, like let's say, uh, what's the management? of hemodynamically unstable actual AF and then it's like drug or DC shock. When you've clicked this snowflake next to the field, it means that if I click and add a card, the the ones that I haven't clicked the snowflake on, they disappear. But the ones that I have clicked the snowflake on stays so that I can save it for the next card. And so I don't need to recopy and paste everything again. That particular plugin is called Frozen Fields. The other one is called Image Occlusion Enhanced. And finally, Android you don't need because that's, you can actually connect video game controllers to your Anki, but you know, that is not for everyone. You have to buy that one actually. Um, the last one I'll talk about is Review Heat Map. So Review Heat Map is simply a motivational thing because as you're getting into studying, basically it colors in a little square. This is kind of hard to see, but it colors in squares as you study every day to just encourage you to keep your streak up. And then it gives you some info on the uh, the number of days that you've studied, for example. Um, and obviously in this deck, I haven't studied much at all <laughs> because of the fact that it's a brand new deck with cards that I've literally just made today, but that's what that's for. The last thing I want to quickly talk about is that you can actually change the styling of your cards. Uh, so for example, let's say you don't like the default uh, Arial thing. If I go to add a card and then I go to cards there, then it has these different styling type things. To be honest, if you know a bit of C CSS, uh, that's how you alter it and you just have to alter the fonts and stuff. That is the ultimate guide to Anki. That's enough to really get you set up with Anki and I feel like if you consistently do Anki over long periods of time, you really will get a lot of benefit out of it. If you're using Notion, there's a way to create Anki cards out of toggle lists. I'm not gonna talk about it too much now, but I'll just leave the video here so you can watch it <laughs> if you want to. If you're trying to keep medical knowledge in a separate database, but you still want to have the benefits of Anki cards, then you can use this instead. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been useful for you as a medical student. Please leave a comment below and you guys take care. Thanks for watching, have a good one. And good luck for your medical school exams or what you're studying for. If you are a doctor, or becoming a doctor, maybe I'll see you around the traps. Catch ya!